Hello everybody, I'm STV and we're in motion again. And today I'm about to show you how I take a simple element clip, like this steam torch, and turn it into so many interesting looks. Or this gears element, and turn it into these looks. All of these clips are made using the amazing radial cloner effect, one of my beloved effects on Resolume 6. We are about to learn how to make these awesome cloner variations and how to layer them to create appealing compositions. Like this one, where I clone these flywheels, the steam and loudspeakers to create this steampunk beat machine. Or this one, where I clone the steam and piston, the gauges and gears to create a framing element that surrounds my live DJ feed. The possibilities are endless once we go into cloning mode. So strap into your seats and let's start cloning. Okay, we can find the radial cloner if we type clone into the effect box. We can find the linear cloner and the radial cloner. Both of them are new in Resolume in any version above 6.1.3, so you have to update your version first. We might have a linear cloner tutorial in the future, but today the stage is all set for radial cloner. And I'm going to brutally use it on loops from the pack Steampunk Vision 2, where we have 30 core loops and a free bonus of about 30 element loops that are ideal for cloning, for tweaking. Because let's take a full screen clip. Full screens are filling the screen from top to bottom. They're great as a background loops. They can be really in your face or they can be a little bit more subtle. On the contrary, element loops do not fill all the screen. We can move them around, we can clone them. And once I realized that, I was like, wait, I can break this element into even smaller elements and give even a different camera angle. And this will make the pack more modular. You can use it in screens that are not 16 by 9, you can use it in mapping. You can do crazy stuff with it. Because just to make the point, let's take a full screen clip and drop a radial cloner on it. It looks wrong, it looks ugly. You can see the lines, you can see the edge of the screen, and this is not the way to use it, in my opinion. Another example with the full screen, and still same lines. This is a no-no. Whereas if you take an element loop, and watch closely, this is almost touching the edges of the screen, but it's not. And then you drop a radial cloner on it, it's perfect. No lines, nothing is being cut, just pure cloning bliss. And by the way, the reason it looks so crisp is because I'm using alpha channels. This is nothing less than a revolution that happened with the XV3. The element loops have transparent background, so now we can layer different elements without the need of using blending modes and get this crisp look while we are cloning them. Okay, let's start with a clean deck where we have the loudspeakers, a piston, a steam torch, gear machine, a flywheel element, a steampunk guitar, the octopunk, a wing element, a pipe element, and this armillary element. Let's start with the piston element. And by the way, you can download some of the elements I'm using here for free at stvinmotion.com slash free. You get the piston loops, including the piston elements, the loudspeakers with their elements, so you can follow this tutorial while using them, and a bunch of other loops, all are here for you to download and play with. And I'm planning on giving you another really useful perk in the end of this tutorial. It's just not ready yet, but it will be when we're done. Okay, I'm holding control and dragging to duplicate. Let's apply a radial cloner effect and change the star rotation to minus 90 for now. Let's go over the different parameters. Let's start off by the number of clones. You can just pull it right or left and change the number of clones. Next up, start radius, where you can increase or decrease the size of the radius on which the clones are being generated. Start scale will increase or decrease the size of each separate clone on this radius. Let's return to the default values by right-clicking the parameter name, and start rotation will spin them on their axis. But let's skip uh, for now these uh, parameters and go straight to the end, to master rotation, which will take any clone array that we created and we'll spin it around the center of the composition. Okay, these were the basic start parameters, but the Resolume team took it much further by adding end parameters to the mix. So let's take the end radius and decrease its size. Let's up the number of clones so can you can see it better. 
what we get now is a wide start radius and a really narrow end radius. And the beautiful byproduct of these radiuses is a spiral. So what will happen if we take the start scale now and the end scale and try to pull the same trick on them? Let's start by increasing the start scale and then decrease the end scale. And you can see up here that the first clone is the largest, their size decreases gradually, and the last clone is the smallest. And what we created reminds me of a Fibonacci spiral, you know, like the ones uh, you can find in nature. And we can spin them around and hypnotize people. So you gotta be careful with that. And we'll see some examples later. But for now, let's go back to default. And let's check the end rotation parameter. And you can see that when I take the end rotation to zero, what I get is that all the clones are facing the same direction. So if I will take now the star rotation and spin it, all of them will uh, rotate to the same direction. So we can get a few interesting looks from this as well. And of course, we can play with the end rotation and get some uh, spunky looks all the way. Okay, moving on to the last uh, feature of this radical cloner effect, the fan. We now have the ability to clone in just a sector of the circle. Think about the ancient hand fan. You can close and open the fan, and depending on the number of clones, you can create some interesting looks. So for instance, I decreased the clones to three, opened the fan angle, and now we can rotate it to the right and add a mirror effect, a horizontal mirror. And we created this uh, piston array we can even take a step further and add a transform effect before the mirror. Now we can push each piston array to the side, making it into something that can be composed with a center element, for instance, or with a background. And if we like the outcome, we can first update the thumbnail by holding Control Shift T. And in Resolume 6 and above, if we want to apply the same effects, we can just copy them or use Control C, go to the clip that we want to apply the effects to, and Paste effects. Et voila, we got all the effects stack applied to the new clip. This can be a nice starting point that can save us time and speed up our work process. Here, for instance, I'm just changing the star rotation and I like this look. Let's say Control Shift T and I want to show you a new look. So let's start with a new copy. Let's apply the radial cloner and let's decrease the start radio to zero and up the start scale a little bit. Okay, let me show you a trick. And for that, I will have to add a transform before the radial cloner. And let's bypass the radial cloner effect. The radial cloner is using the center of the composition as its center point. But I would like the subwoofer to be the center of the cloning. I can reposition the original clip, and this will affect the outcome in the radial cloner. So right now, the subwoofer is in the center of the composition. And when I apply the radial cloner, a totally different outcome. Let's move it again with the radial cloner on. This is how changing the center point affects the radial cloner. Okay, now we're going to do something really radical or radial, which is to apply another radial cloner on top. And yes, it's possible, and it blew my mind the first time I did it, but it's working. And this is the power of stacking effects. Let me add a constant master rotation on the first copy and lower a little bit the speed. That's about right. Let's uh, reactivate now the second copy and up the start radius. Let's up the number of clones as well and up the start scale. Let's up the start radius a bit more. And we've created this swirling porthole. Now we can place any element inside, like this Octopunk for instance, or any other element. Okay, Control Shift T to update the thumbnail. Let's copy the same clip by Control Dragging. And let's tweak the parameters a little bit to get a new look. Let's start by decreasing the end radius all the way to zero. Then lower the end rotation a little bit. Yes. Now we can spin the master rotation and create this hypnotic thing. We can up the number of clones and let's automate the master rotation by setting it to timeline. And let's reduce the speed a little bit. Awesome. I like the way you can take one clip with its effects, copy it and create a different look. Don't forget to update the thumbnail. And let's carry on with the steampunk equivalent of a CO2 cannon. Only that this one is a real steampunk steam machine. And you can even take the effects from a different clip and drop it on this steampunk machine 
and now you have multiplied your steam powers. You can always adjust the parameters to your liking. In this case, let's up the start scale a little bit and give it more volume. And the stage is set, and now we can add any element below it or above it as we like. Okay, let's copy this clip again. This time I'd like to emit steam from the center of the composition. So let's reduce the start radius to zero, but still it doesn't reach the center. So let's turn off the effects for now. We will have to reposition again the original clip and move its center in order to change the outcome in the radial cloner. So let's apply a transform and scale down the original size and move it left on the x-axis just about before it touches the edges of the composition. We want to have it centered, so we might move it just a little bit more. And now, if we'll activate the radial cloner again, we got the element straight on the center. And that's great, because now we can up the number of the clones and create this kind of array of steaming pipes. It's like a steam screen that can hide things behind it. Let's activate the transformer mirror. And unfortunately, we can see that the steam is kind of disappearing when it hits the mirrored steam. So I want to show you now this cool trick using flip instead. And you might say flip, you mean the one that flips, just flips. And I say yes, the flipping flip. But if we we'll take the blend mode and change it to add, and then on the opacity, we go 99.99. .99. And surprise, we got ourselves two copies of the same element in a non-destructive way or something like that. Anyways, they don't interfere one with the other and we can just move them around freely. So goodbye mirror for now, and hello flip mirror. And to simplify my workflow, I saved this flip mirror setup as a preset here. And by the way, I'm using this simple hack to filter my favorite effects, cause in Resolume 6, you can easily type the first letters of the effect you're after, and it will pop right away. But what if I have like 10 effects that I really like, and I'm using them all the time? I could save a preset for each effect, it includes a rarely used sign. I'm using the grave accent here. It's easy to find in the end of the keyboard. And hey, if you have a super favorite effect, you can add two grave signs to the preset and you will get your super favorite effect list. And this is how I'm able to speed up my workflow, save some clicks and not look at my keyboard too often like some VGs do, but not you of course. Okay, let's hold control and drag the clip again to copy it. We are making another variation. We won't need the flip, we won't need the transform. Let's bring the fan back to 100% and up the number of the clones. And we've created another variation, the steam wheel of life if you'd like, which can add a lot of mood behind elements or between elements, or as someone once told me, steampunk without steam is just punk, right? So let's carry on and make some more steam variations. Let's copy this clip for now. And we don't need the flip and the transform again. What we do need, this time is another radio cloner, because we are about to make a smoke screen. Let's reduce the number of clones to six, and the star rotation will be minus 90, so all of them will face inwards. Let's up the start scale to its maximum, and up the start radius as well. So, we've created this smoke screen, where we can place any object below it, and it will look like it's actually behind the smoke screen. Okay, let's update the thumbnail, and copy this clip one more time. Let's remove the second radial cloner effect and add a transform effect. The transform will rotate it 90 degrees. Let's make it exactly 90. Then let's lower this element almost to the bottom of our composition. Next, let's take this gears element and I want to show you how to create a composition made out of cloned elements. Let's adjust a little bit the star radius and start scale and then add these pistons. Now, each one of these pistons is animated on its own, but by adding animation inside the effect, by moving the start radius on the beat, we can first move it manually, oomph, oomph, then automate these values. I see that 0.6 and up to 0.7 is about right here. We'll add the BPM sync and enter these values. So 0.6 and up to 0.7, and we will use the amazing envelope feature to really fine control these values. Let's first loop it, and really the envelope deserves a tutorial of its own, but basically the lower part, 0.6 here, corresponds with the left or lower values of the given parameter, while the upper part corresponds with the right or higher values. So when we add a keyframe that's ending the envelope with the start value, we got the holy loop. We can move the keyframes, add new keyframes, and really push the envelope. 
But for this example, we'll just keep these keyframes. But we gotta bend this linear line in order to make it oomph. So we'll choose circular in to sling it in, and we'll choose quadratic in out to ease in and out from its rest position. Okay, let's speed up the animation a bit by dividing the bit on the start radius and by speeding up the original clip. Let's resync and mm, tss, mm, tss, mm. very nice. By the way, I can pull the same trick on the start scale as well, make the pistons smaller when they rest and make them bigger when they impact. So starting small at 28 and ending larger at about 36. Let's add an envelope. And if you want to have the same curve, we can use the preset feature, meaning we can save the preset that we like. Let's call it the uh, oomph, of course. And now we can apply this preset simply by clicking the preset button and choosing the oomph preset. Look at them, same, same, but different. We should divide the bit on the start scale to match everything to the same bit. Um, shakalaka, laka, um, shakalaka, laka, um. Everything is good. And in the beginning of this tutorial, we had some gouges on the gears. Let's check how they were made. Let's bypass the effects. And this is a gauge element with a radar cloner in fan mode to keep the clones on the same path as the gears. A transform to push them a little bit sideways and flip, of course. And to make it look as if these elements are sitting one on top of the other, I added a fake ambient occlusion look by using a drop shadow. It adds a little bit of relationship between the elements and it works pretty well on a black background. So we got the frame ready. It's time to bring our favorite DJ. And this is Boris Brescia. It's a fake live feed. He's not right here now, but I listened to many of his sets and I will give you a link down below to listen to his music as well. Of course, we can place any element behind this frame, even the logo of your event. I mean, no big deal. They want to see the logo. You make it pretty. Okay, on to the next look we can achieve with the Radio Cloner. We took one Octopunk and we are about to create a swarm of Octopunks. So let's start by reducing to about four clones and then reduce the radius. And the magic parameter in this case will be N rotation. So that's nice, but they all look the same. Let's reduce the end scale to make it look more random. That's much better. But I'd like to have the big one on the right instead of on top. And I can use fan offset to achieve exactly that. Place it where I want it and compensate for this offset with the start rotation. One happy family of octopunks. Let's make them swim by adding the slide effect and setting the Y parameter to timeline to make it a constant swim. Lower the speed because they are just chilling. And we can compose them live later with this kind of background, add some steam to it, and it can be a nice visual for the quiet part of the track. Okay, so having these octopunks swim upwards is nice, but octopunks are sophisticated beings and they can swim sideways too. I mean, they have brains in their arms. Check it if you don't believe me. So I set the rotation to 45 degrees. Now let's slide them left on the x-axis in 0.3 speed and have the same thing on the y-axis, 0.3 and slide them upwards. Now this is almost right. Uh, they're sliding kind of upwards but a little bit more to the left than I want to. And this is because we have a 16 by 9 composition and the x and y slide values are related to these proportions. Luckily Resolum is a calculator too. And what we need to do is to multiply this value in the aspect ratio, meaning 0.3 multiplying 16 divided by 9. And the math would have worked. They are now sliding 45 degrees to the left in a perfect diagonal. And if you are asking yourself what the answer is, is 0.53. Okay, so much for our math lesson for today. Try this on your own risk at home. Let's see how it looks with the background. And it looks awesome. So let's move on. Our next clip is an innocent looking pipe. Let's add the radio cloner and up the start scale. And wow, we already have a very nice look going on. We can add our horizontal flip mirror preset to it. Stimkadelic. Now we can even add the drop shadow. And look how much depth we can get with adding the drop shadow. I like it. I just like it. And this might come to you as a surprise, but this can be a nice frame element for our live DJ feed. This one is fake, 
though. So okay, this was nice, but we can make it even more interesting if we'll animate the pipe before it gets cloned. And to do that I'm going to use iterate and I'm going to place it before the radial cloner. It loads up quite funky, but we can fix that by setting the blend mode to 0.5. Now iterate was the king of clones before the new cloners arrived, but it still got a few tricks up its sleeve. One of which is the ability to keep the original look and scale up the new iterations. So triple look right off the bat, let's decrease the number of iterations to 2 and try to separate between the iterations using the translate y parameter. Iterate samples from the center and I'd like to have more space between the iterations. So I'll add the transform effect to push down the original clip before it gets iterated. So pushing down the position y almost until the end of the composition and now we get more maneuver space on the translate y parameter that we can animate. Let's first up the scale of the iterated element. That's nice, because now we get the illusion that one of the elements is closer to us. Now we can move the translate y slider and find the minimum and maximum animation range. 0.50 to about 0.80. Let's add a BPM sync and set the minimum and maximum values. So 0.5 and 0.8. Now let's add an envelope interpolate it into a nice curve. We are done here, so let's minimize the transform and iterate panels and enable the radial cloner effect again. That's crazy. We can even make the whole thing spin by dropping a timeline animation on the master rotation, change its direction, and reduce its speed. Pipedelic. So these were some of the examples of what this amazing cloner can do. The effect comes with a few presets that I had the honor to make. Let's check them out now. We can apply the bit bounce preset on this speaker loop. Each clone is growing on the scale parameter and everything is spinning around with the master rotation. This timpa guitar is flipped with the flip effect and we have a drop shadow to define the clones better. We can apply a Fibonacci spiral on it. Fibonacci might have uh, twisted in his grave because this isn't a classic Fibonacci spiral, but it's enough. Plus, you can always add a flip effect and stereo spiral everyone. Okay, this one is favorite, because I'm only using here a steel frame out of this steampunk guitar. And transform to scale it down and place its bottom in the center of the composition. Let's drop a Fibonacci twist on it. It's already looking interesting. Let's up the maximum number of clones to make it look smoother. Then, add the flip effect. And we get this wingy element that can work well with a center element like this. Something sacred is there, I tell you. This speaker element was turned into a circle with the mirror effect. Let's apply the reveal preset. And I'm using here the exponential curve to give it more character. And it reveals the original element because its opacity is set to 99. Here's another steel frame. This one is a scaled down pipe element. When we apply the springy preset, we get this springy element using the bounce curvature. These were the presets. Remember, you can make presets of your own and save them. And if you made a cool preset, send it over. I'm curious to see what did you make. Alrighty, let's speed things up. I'm going to create more variations, then show you how they were all made. Okay, the original elements are in purple. Let's start with this flywheel element. This is the original. And this is radially cloned. Let's see how it was made. Radial clone is on zero radius. Then transform, pushing it aside and flip to make it look like it's intersecting using the 99.99 .99 transparency trick I showed you earlier. A few more cloning setups and I kept the effects open so you can pause and see the exact values. This one is animating with the envelope on the fan and fan offset. This is a similar setup. This one is using the JAWS envelope preset or exponential curves. Again, changing the start radius. This one is animating the start rotation with the end rotation at zero. And the way I'm creating copies when the deck is full is by holding control. Now you see this little line that appears? It will insert it and push the others to the right. Now I can bypass some of the effects, change the look a bit, turn on the transform, maybe set it back to default. Now I can reposition it, turn back the flip effects, maybe move it a little bit more, to make it look like it's a one element, 
And here we have a new look. Update the thumbnail and carry on. This gear machine element can turn into a swirling gear machine or into a gears porthole or into this really delicate clockwork framing element. And let's bypass the effects to see how it was made. So this is the original element radially cloned into this weird array. Wait, let's turn it off and recreate it again. This looks familiar. Let's decrease the clones to three, lower the start radius, change the start rotation, and the end rotation, reduce the fan percentage, and bring it back into the frame with the master rotation and maybe lower the end rotation to zero. So this is how this uh, weird looking gear array was made. Let's turn the original back on. We don't need the example anymore. Add a transform to move it sideways, a flip to mirror it, use another transform to move it here, another flip to make this 90 degree angle, transform to move it to the corner, and finally flip horizontal and flip vertical to mirror it into this framing element. And hey, you can put stuff inside now. And our next look is using the same gear array, only that it swings it back and forth using an envelope on the start rotation. Let's turn it back on. And this look can go really well with this, as they are using opposite swinging envelopes. And maybe add some steam. Wait, better have the steam in between. Yep, now it looks like it's coming from within the gears. And this one is made by animating the fan and the position X. Our next element is the steam torch. And this look is made with an effect we already saw. But I added a linear cloner to clone it sideways. And added the vertical flip to mirror it vertically. A few more examples. And this one is interesting. How is it made? It's a radial cloner fan. Move to the side with transform and then iterated diagonally. You can see the values on the right, but we could pull it using both the horizontal and vertical parameters on the flip effect too. And then we add a horizontal flip and transform to move it a little bit to the side. And this look is made with one element, I swear. Next up is the piston and we can pull this crazy look quite easily. Next up is this uh, clash crash look made of something similar to the Octopunk family we had before. Push to the side, we transform, and then flipped horizontally and vertically. Clash, crash, clash. And another crash, but this one spins as well. And it uses a set of keyframes to spin the array at the moment the piston is closed. Hold, spin, hold, spin. And it does it four times to four clones to keep a four by four beat. Next one is taking the same four clones and adding another rotation that keeps them pointing at the same direction. So we have a master rotation that rotates at the same moment as the start rotation. They compensate one for the other and we get this awesome look. This one is possibly too much. It reminds me of something fractal. It's made of a mirrored piston that is cloned into this and then cloned again in a fan. Look for yourself. No hands. It is then iterated diagonally or mirror diagonally with the iterate effect. And as if this was not enough, flip is flipping everything. Horrible. And the next one is using the same cloning basis and adds a more radial look to it. And this ninja star is another example for the same thing. This one reminds me of the famous Nautilus shell and is made of this clone array with a Fibonacci spiral preset that spins, then move to the side with transform, and finally iterates diagonally. And the last one is using start rotation and end scale to create this look. Next up, our pipe element. This can be a nice background or a framing element. This one is using a sector of the fan along with the flip. Here, transform is repositioning the pipe before it's being cloned. This one is using the diagonal iteration trick and this one as well. This one is nice and because the shape of the pipe we are sometimes getting an opening in the pipes 
so we can place elements behind it because it's all about layering. Let's have a look at this wing element that can be turned into this mechanical wing wonder where we can place one element behind it, replace it while the wings are closed and surprise with a new element. We can also arrange the wings to cover the sides or to become a center element. And the armillary element, cloned and rotated, or cloned with zero radius, or cloned in the Fibonacci spiral, and same thing with the diagonal iterate. And last is Fibonacci twist. Okay, very cool. We created a lot of new looks, but having these looks spread all over the deck is not a good tactic. We better arrange them into ready compositions that we can fire with one click. And what do I mean by that? So here I layered these cloned elements marked in blue and to the left you can see the original elements just for reference. One click on the column number will trigger all the layers below. And of course I can click on any clip separately to mix between the columns. So this is triggering a whole set of layers at once. Let's see a different set of layers. This flywheel is cloned in a sector of the fan and then flipped. We know these cloned wings by now. And look how I made the flywheel joints to overlap the wind axis. We can add this chamber clip as a background, a center element like this butterfly, and of course some clones theme to add some volume. We can of course add some backgrounds, but that's later. Next is a composition made of clones of this flywheel that swing on the start rotation. Let's add these cloned loudspeakers and they are shaking cause the music is really really strong and the shake is made by scaling them a tiny bit, but very, very fast. Let's add a center element, also scaled in an interesting way on the quarters. Of course, add some steam, and notice that this is a recurring motif on this layer. And finally, let's add this hammer's loop on the sides to make it all tick, tock, tick, tock. Are we having fun? Tell me in the comments. Next, these gears with these dual loudspeakers on the sides and these tweeters, some steam and clone flywheels. Looking tight. And notice the bouncy curve of the tweeters and how the loudspeakers have a different bouncy curve to make it all pump in different timings. Next we have this mental clock and look how it's shaking with an envelope noise preset. Adding clone flywheels to both sides and animated clones behind. Clone steam is a must. And check out these hammer elements that you can kick on demand. Ish, 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 ish. Very satisfying. Our last example is another mental clock, but this one is really shaky because the pressure is really high. Along with the brain machine element, some clone steam, cloned flywheels, and in the back, these high impact clone speakers Royale. Okay, to finish the deck and make it ready for the show, I will clear the reference elements and fill in the gaps with more clones. I'll be back to test the deck for real with some music. So, back with the track, we see in blue these compositions that I made earlier. And in between, I added more variations so we can get a smooth mix. Let's see what we got. This one we already know. This is a similar look with a different background and see how the wings are shaking here with some noise. Another look with the different wings. This one we know. This is a variation. Again, we know this one. And here's another one with the same spirit. And a different one. This one we know. And these ones are variations. Another familiar one and two more different looks. Now, the beauty is that you can mix and match different clips. Start from this, then change the center, then the foreground. Mix different steam, different gears, different background. Change the center again, change the foreground. Kick the beat a bit, kick, kick, column trigger, kick, kick, different column trigger. Add these on the offbeat, change the steam, change the background, mix and match, mix and match, and when the beat comes, drop it. 
Later on, the breakdown will come, and you will go butterflies, and then the beat drop again. You know, the circle of life. That's it, folks. I gave you everything I got. Almost. Let me prepare for you that perk I promised you in the beginning. So I created this free deck for you. It's made of the loops you can uh, download for free on our website. I copied the clone clips that we made together, plus added more variations of stuff we didn't have time to make. So download this deck, link the free loops to it. You'll be able to reverse engineer what we did here and even copy the whole effect stack onto your existing clips. Some elements might need a resync to work properly. And if you have any questions, you can ask me in the comments below. I actually think that giving you a deck is so useful that I will include a deck from now on with every pack to save you the preparations and get you into speed the moment you purchase a pack. Okay, let's wrap it up. We learned today how to use the amazing Radiac Cloner effect from the basic parameters to the advanced ones. We learned how to stack it with more effects to make interesting looks, to animate these parameters with powerful envelopes, to compose the clone clips into beautiful compositions, and how to prepare a deck for a show where we can jam freely and surprise even ourselves. I hope you learned some new tricks today, and if you did, please share this tutorial, spread these techniques so others can use them, let's keep on evolving the VGN scene and amaze them crowds. I was STV and we were in motion. Let's wrap it up with some music and jamming.